teeth be making you sick? We all know that bacteria in our mouth causes cavities, but have you thought about root canals? And what about having your wisdom teeth taken out? Did you know that these are both breeding grounds for multiple bacteria? So bacteria and the toxins that they produce can cause disease. It's a big problem and it's not one that's widely accepted in, in mainstream dentistry. It was back in 1909 that Weston Price, a dentist at that time, studied this and did extensive studies on it. And he presented, or his, his family presented, Dr. Hal Huggins with this information back in 1986. And at the time, Dr. Huggins didn't know much about what was in those papers, but he was stunned when he saw how much research was done showing that these, these infections that are in the presence of root canals and cavitations, which are the places where wisdom, wisdom teeth have been removed and what's left, are major issues in, in our health. This is amazing to me that this has been ignored since 1909. They've known about this. And what's the Dental Association say N now? Not much. And a lot of it's recommended around arrogance and about being naive and thinking that they're just right because that's what's been accepted is, is what's going on. And it's also about money. You know, once the status quo is in place and it has a technology that it uses, it holds on for dear life because it doesn't want to disappear because if it does, it's going to lose all the in income that goes with it. There are probably an, about 90, close to 90 different microbes that are found in cavitations or root canals. And those uh, particular bacteria, interestingly enough, can produce up to five different kinds of endotoxin, which is what makes us sick. And that depends on what the environment is like that determines which endotoxin or how many endotoxins are going to be uh, secreted by those microbes and cause the problems with our health. So let's uh, define what a root canal is and the accessory mm -hmm. uh, canals and the tubules so that people can really understand why this is fair such enough, a problem. Fair enough. A root canal is usually done when a tooth is in pain or where there's a clear infection and very often in the root of the, of the tooth. And very often what the dentist will do is they'll x-ray your mouth and if they see dark, a dark place where there's resorption of bone, where the bone, where the tooth uh, is held in, in place by the bone, they'll say, well, there's an infection there and we need to do a root canal. Now, if there's a lot of pain there, no question. And sometimes they're absolutely right that when there's this dark uh, space there, there is infection even if you don't have symptoms. But that's something that uh, is is leading to uh, doing these root canals so they can get rid of the infection, so they think. So they go down and drill a hole in the tooth right down to the root, take out the nerve, so now the tooth is dead, and think that they put a little gutta percha in there, which is the kind of wax that they use to seal off, so, so they think no infection from the inside of the tooth uh, could be a problem, keeping in mind that there are miles of tubules in the dentin uh, of the tooth that are impossible to sterilize with something like gutta percha. So what we have is a situation here where uh, a lot of microbes are breeding grounds inside those miles of tubules and they continue to express themselves, increasing their, their volume and they ooze out into the surrounding tissues. And that's why when a tooth is removed that's had a root canal, you can see a little pocket of pus at the tip of it. There's a lot of infection. And in someone who's not got good health, that can be a major factor. What Weston Price found and Hal Huggins found was that when they ground up those, those root canals, that every one of them was infected. And the tip of every root canal that was there had some infection at the tip as well. So the tooth is infected, the tip has got a little pocket of pus, and that is what's causing some of the things that we're seeing in, in medicine today. treatments are performed when the pulp inside the tooth has died or is dying, usually as a result of either the ingress of bacteria associated with decay or cracking or fracture of the tooth. The dentist aims to clean out all the root canal system and then obturate it using a rubbery material and a cement. This is challenging in itself as the canal system is very complex with lots of interconnections, additional canals 
and lateral and accessory canals, which make the job almost impossible. However, the insurmountable issue appears to relate to the structure of the dentine itself. Dentine is composed of millions of tiny tubules, which in health are occupied and maintained by the cells that form the dentine, known as odontoblasts. When the tooth has died or been root-filled, these odontoblasts and their supplying vessels and nerves die. And when the tooth dies or is root-filled, the conditions within the tooth change radically from aerobic to anaerobic. Any bacteria within the tooth morph into their anaerobic forms, reproduce prolifically and produce extremely noxious toxins. The tooth effectively acts as a microbial hatchery since it provides nutrients, moisture and incubation at body temperature, but critically prevents the immune system from tackling the source since there is no circulation to the tooth. The bacteria and their toxins leach into the surrounding bone and membrane and the pumping action of the tooth within its socket when chewing causes dispersal into the circulation. In this way, the tooth acts as a focus of infection which can infect and poison the rest of the body. Every root-filled tooth has been found to contain at least 10 species and some in excess of 40 microbial species, but it is probably the toxins they produce that represent the greatest issue, some being a thousand times more toxic than botulinum toxin. In addition, retention of a dead and infected body part can exhaust the immune response, leading to autoimmune diseases and chronic fatigue, and can affect meridian flows, and there is a particular association between root-filled teeth and cancer. Dr. McCullough say it isn't true. 97% of cancer patients have previously had a root canal. Uh, you got to be kidding. <clears throat> uh, doc, I've provided the links, to, uh, links below, but uh, basically Dr. McCullough in his uh, video uh, explains about uh, Winston A. Price, a pioneer dentist, that had proved that these things are totally unsafe uh, over 100 years ago. And uh, the... Uh, the dental associations have done everything they can to discredit the man and the man's research, but he was he was brilliant and he was right, and people are dying because of it. Uh, you know these root canals are basically keep a dead tooth in your mouth, and the roots cannot get oxygen to them, so they become anaerobic and septic, and uh, cause prolonged uh, prolonged infection and pain. Now, I'm not saying that all dentists are bad and all dentists are in on this thing, but it damn sure looks like they're part of the uh, the population control group. At least at least some of them are. And I wish they would uh, take a look at what's going on. Uh, and, and look who's uh, going to be providing your health care here pretty quick. So take a look at the links below. It's real, it's real important. I'm getting ready to get a root canal yanked and probably some fillings too. God bless. Take care. Don't let these suckers kill you. Bye-bye. Hello, this is Dr. Mercola, and I welcome you to another question and answer video update. Today we're going to focus on the question, what do you do if your dentist recommends a root canal? Let me expand on the root canal issue because this is an important area that we see in many of our patients and actually is an, is an important cause of energetic dysfunction that can cause serious disease in many people. So I do not recommend root canals for anyone. And the reason why, and you can expand on some of the, the details on, the, on this page, but basically your tooth, tooth is composed of miles, many miles of very tiny canals. And when the dentist takes out that middle cavity in the or middle central section of the tooth and seeks to sterilize the tooth. It is physically impossible to sterilize it. So what winds up happening is some bacteria wound up get caught, getting caught in the tooth. And then when it's sealed, these bacteria are then in, encased in an anaerobic or oxygen starved environment, in which case these bacteria mutate into forms that they were never designed to be and can actually secrete toxins. And depending on which tooth has the root canal, it can cause quite severe um, health dysfunctions in the person who has it. So that's why I don't recommend them. So if you don't have a root canal and, you, and your tooth needs to be extracted then because you don't want to keep a dead tooth in your body. There's no other organ in your body that any health professional would ever recommend keeping a dead 
dead uh, organ in it.